Okay folks, we have seen in the previous video that the best time complexity, the worst time complexity, this is the best time complexity, this is the worst case time complexity and this is the space complexity, right? So I'm just writing each of them as f of n, some function of n. And we saw that this is order of n. We also saw that this is order of n square. And we saw that this was order of 1. And we gave some intuitive understanding stating that here a and b are constants and b is multiplied by 1. Similarly here a dash, b dash, c dash are constants as n increases, n square increases much more than n and hence this is n square. And here again as n increases 1 is a constant while n increases as n increases obviously and hence it is order of 1. And since this is a constant which is 3 variables it is order of 1. So we have given an intuitive definition. What we have done here is in the previous video, we have given an intuitive definition or intuitive understanding of what O of n means. So here this O is nothing is also called as big O. This O here is called the big O of n or in other words, it's also read as order of n. This is read as order of n. This is how you read it in English. This is read as order of n, right? Having said that, Let's understand what order of n actually means. There are three other notations. There is big O, there is theta, and there is big omega. There are three notations in, in the analysis of algorithms or in time complexity, space complexity analysis. We'll understand each of these, right? First, we'll start with big O because we've already seen it in the previous video. So let's understand all of these three notations more rigorously and more mathematically. Right? First, we start with the big O of n. What does big O basically mean? Let's start there. Imagine, imagine I have, first let me try and draw a diagram and I'll explain this diagram for you and we'll connect the diagram with the mathematical formulation. Right? Imagine this is my input size. Right? Let's say my f of n looks like this. Let's assume this is my f of n. Right? My time or space complexity, whatever I have. Okay, this is how, let's assume it changes. Right? This is my y-axis, this is my x-axis. Now comes the fun part. Now let's assume there exists a function called, so let's assume there exists a function like this, okay? Okay, let's assume there exists a function like this, which is a constant multiplied by g of n, such that, again, let me explain this function, okay? Let me just draw this. This is n0. What is happening here is, for all values of n greater than equal to n0, which means for all of these values, right? For all of the values where n is greater than or equal to n0, right? So n0 here is a constant and c is also a constant here, right? So let me change the colors here, right? c is a constant and n0 is a constant here. So for all the values where n is greater than n0, the constant multiplied by c of gn is greater than or equal to f of n. So let me write it, okay? So we state that f of n is order of g of n, right? Remember, f of n and g of n are functions of n. We say that f of n is equal to order of g n if and only if, let me write the whole thing and I'll then connect the graph and the math, right? If and only if, if and only if, right? There exists, if and only if, there exists two constants, there exist two constants n0 and c such that there exist two constants n0 and c such that f of n is always greater than or equal to 0 and f of n is always less than or equal to c multiplied by g of n for all for all n greater than or equal to n0. So let's connect the dots now. So what are we saying here? What we are writing in this mathematical statement is same as what we are representing here in this graph, right? What are we saying here? For all n greater than equal to n0, right? For all n, for all of these values of n, your f of n, your f of n is less than equal to g of n, sorry, c into g of n. Your f of n is less than equal to c into g of n, right? That's what it says, right? Because your f of n curve is below the c of n curve for any value n here for any value n here your c into g of n is greater than your f of n 
for all values of n which are greater than n0 this is true and f of n is greater than or equal to 0 obviously because this is the 0 comma 0 right your f of n is above this line and hence f of n is greater than or equal to 0 and it is less than or equal to some constant multiplied by g of n and if we can find these constants n0 and c if there exists some constants n0 and c then f of n is said to be order of g of n right so if if you plot your f of n and g of n like this if there exists two constant if you can find a constant c and a constant n0 such that this whole statement is true then we say that f of n is order of g of n this is the rigorous mathematical definition and i've used this definition from the from the from the from the bible from the cormann leeserson book right the clrs textbook remember in lots of mathematics or algorithms or computer science right this is my favorite uh, way of understanding it diagrams are like the art diagrams are like art right equations or statements like this are like poetry right this is how i understand it right diagrams plots they are the art of mathematics remember most of this algorithmic analysis is mathematics right and all of these equations are the poetry and it's very hard to remember these mathematical statements but it's very very easy to remember to understand and to remember these diagrams i've seen this diagram probably 13 14 years back in my btec second year in my undergraduate second year almost 13 14 years ago from the same clrs textbook i still remember this diagram and when i was writing this equation i wrote this equation because of this because of this diagram i don't remember this whole statement but i constructed this statement based on this diagram right so equations or statements like this are the poetry of mathematics or algorithms and the art is the diagrams art is much more easy to remember and recall and understand poetry makes the statements more rigorous and mathematically ma mathematically beautiful okay enough of the poetry and art of mathematics now let's go back to the original question here we said that if my time complexity is a dash n square plus b dash n plus c dash we said it is order of n square intuitively in the previous video now given this rigorous definition can i prove this is important part can i somehow construct a proof can i construct a proof for this can i construct a rigorous proof for this how do we do it let's take an example imagine my f of n just for simplicity let's replace the constants that we have right let's assume my f of n is 2 n square plus 1 into n plus 3 i've just taken three constants here this is my a dash this is my b dash this is my c dash now we have to prove that this is order of n square right we have to prove this is my f of n and what is my g of n here my g of n is this because I am saying, remember, this is my g of n. This is my g of n. This is my f of n. Now, what do I have to do? To prove that this f of n is order of n square, I have to find two constants n0 and c such that this whole equation is satisfied. Now, let's try and find it out. Okay. Let's say, let. Okay. Let's just say. So, I want to find. Okay. So, what I want to do is 1 into n plus 3 is less than equal to some constant multiplied by n square for all for all n greater than equal to some n0 what is my task here my task is to find some c constant and n0 right if i can find some constants if i can find some constants where this inequation these are called inequations because you have a less than equal to if this inequation is true if i can prove that there exists a constant c and n dash where this equation is true then my statement is correct that's how i prove that this f of n is order of n square so let's try to do that with some simple example let's say c equals to 10 let's say c is equal to 10 let 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 let's just say c equals to 10 so then what does what does what happens to this so this becomes 2 of n square plus 1 into n plus 3 is less than equal to 10 n square for all for all n greater than equal to n0 we still don't know what n0 is 
we just assumed some value for C. So first we assume some value for C. Let's see if we can find some N0 where this is always true. If you can find some N0 where this is true, given that we fixed C equals to 10, we are good. Because what does the equation say? Equations, there exist some N0 and C. It could be any N0 and C, I don't care. So I'm saying let's fix my C to 10. Let's play around with N0. Now for this, if I divide both sides by, okay, let me write it on a fresh page, right? So what do we have here? 2N square plus n plus 3 is less than equal to 10 n square for all n greater than or equal to some n0. Now I have to find this n0. Now if I divide both sides by n square, what do I get? 2, what do I get here? I get 1 by n, I get 3 by n square, right? 10. I can divide both, si both sides by n square because n square is, is, is always greater than 0. Because n is greater than or equal to 1. Remember, your n is greater than or equal to 1. Always. Right? So I can always make this division. This will perfectly work. Now look at this. Now if n equals to 1, what happens? If n equals to 1, what happens to the LHS? When n equals to 1, what happens to this? This becomes 2 plus 1 by 1, which is 1, plus 3 by 1, which is 3, is less than or equal to 10. True. Because 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 is less than 10. So this is true. Now what happens when n equals to 2? When n equals to 2, the first term remains 2. The second term becomes 1 by 2. The third term becomes 3 by 4. Is this less than 10? Obviously. Because 2, remember, this value that you got here is less than this value. This value that you got here is less than this value. And this whole sum, and this, these two are equal. These two are equal. This value is greater than this. This value is greater than this. Right? So if this whole sum is less than 10, obviously this sum is going to be less than 10. Similarly, let's say n equals to 3. What happens here? The first one stays the same. The second one is 1 by 3. The third term is 3 by 9. Now what happens here? Same argument. This is the same. 1 by 3 is less than 1 by 2. Sorry, 1 by 2 is greater. So 1 by 2, this term is greater than this. Similarly, this term is going to be greater than this. Right? So which means this overall is going to be less than or equal to 10. Same argument you can keep constructing. Because as n increases, 1 by n reduces. Similarly, as n increases, 3 by n square also reduces. So for all, okay, let me write this. For all for all n greater than or equal to 1, for all n greater than or equal to 1, this equation is true. In other words, in other words, I can say that my f of n, I can say that my f of n is less than or equal to 10 into n square for all n greater than or equal to 1. Now here if you notice, I have found my constant c and my constant n0, right? Look at this. I found my constant c and my constant n0. What does the formula say? What does the definition say? This is not the formula. This is a definition. It says your f of n, right? We have proved that this f of n is less than or equal to c into g of n. And we have found constants n0 and c, which means your f of n. So what does this imply? This implies that your f of n is going to be order of n square. Very simple proof. Now, same proof you can do for different values of a square, b square, and c square. Try to do that on, on, your, on your notebook. Take different values of a, a dash, not a square, sorry. Take different values of a dash, b dash, and c dash. Right? You can find constants c and n0. You can find. Of course, then c may not be 10. c may be some other value. But you can, for any given values of a dash, b dash, and c dash, you can find constants c and n0 such that this equation is always true and hence f of n is always order of n square. Very simple. This is the definition of what order of n means. This is the definition of what order of n means. In the next video, remember there are two more notations. There is theta and there is big omega, big theta and big omega. We'll learn about these two in the next video because the key, the most used amongst these notations is big O. This is what is extensively used. 
I'll discuss about theta and omega and this will be very quick. If you have understood this, understanding theta and omega is going to be straightforward. That we will discuss in the next video.